Okay, my uh, my major topic, uh, my topic. Uh, also, thanks for the uh, invitation to come here to give a presentation. I still remember when I was young. <coughs> you know, uh, when I just came to the uh, came to the university to study English because we just started very late. There's one item is all the ways can lead to Rome. Today I'm on, I'm in a Rome. So what does it mean to me? The dream comes true. <laughs> uh, hopefully that's the case. Okay. Since my previous uh, uh, speakers have given a over nice overall talk introduction about the building protection, so I guess I can save some time to skip this up uh, slides. So basically, I want to say building is the major product produced by gut bacteria. And it has many functions. Again, as my previous has done an excellent job, I don't need to go through all of them. So I can, uh, I can just go to the next slide. So there's one important issue in animal production is withdraw the antibiotics from feed. This is a very urgent issue global-wise. So how can we select uh, alternatives which can replace antibiotics in feed? We have some certain parameters need to, need to meet. Ideally, it can effective control enteric infection, and also it can keep, uh, maintain the productivity. Uh, profit. Uh, in addition, idea is not to change the current procedures for the for the production, and the build rate has some beautiful functions which can meet those criteria. But also, build rate has a uh, limitation. I still remember, you know, I did my PhD on rumen bacteria. So each time when we prepare the rumen, rumen bacteria medium, we have to put the build rate into the medium. Each time when we prepare the medium, the whole floor was full of the, uh, you know, terrible smell, and the other labs all come to, always come to my boss, hey, Cecil, your, your lab is awful. The smell is uh, very offending. So to solve that problem, so we can use the sodium build rate. We can also use encapsulation technology. Then the other way is to make a build rate glycosylate. Uh, because we have the lipase uh, in, the, in the small intestine, so those animals can release the build rate from, uh, from build rate to have the free build rate. So build rate also have antimicrobial activity as the previous speaker mentioned. And this one, we just do a one in vitro studies. Basically, we use the my, uh, digester collect from chicken, uh, from chicken uh, uh, sicum. Then we spike the pathogens, Simulana or Clostridium perfringens into the medium. And also we add in different concentration of a building and to see what happened. And we found actually, so in the control, which uh, had the pathogen spike in the spike in the digester, but no building supplement. But the uh, supplement, but you can see, uh, because when we make inoculation, the level of inoculation is 10 to uh, 5 times 10 to 3 CFU. Uh, but after several hours growth in the control, uh, the tubes, the level of the clostridium perfringens can reach 10 to 7. Uh, this is here. But when at, at the different concentration of buildering, like buildering, so even at the 1,000 1, ppm, so we only detect like a 10 to 2 CFU. 
yeah, program. So this the antimicrobial activity is obvious. This, this was done under anaerobic conditions. And also previous studies done by Steve Lesson at the University of Guelph, and I think uh, he was the one of the pioneer doing this work. And he found actually when you add the build rate glycosylate into the feed, it can improve the growth, uh, animal growth performance. By looking at this feed convention, so you can see the control is 1 to 0.45, and uh, this, uh, this, this the group with the antibiotics, it's lower. And when you have an addition of 0.2% 0.4% the acid, so the feeding efficiency is almost close to uh, the group uh, raised on the antibiotics. And to follow up this work, and we also did some animal trials. First, you, we, because there are two uh, different types of forms of the buildering. One is to have a tri -buildering, so that means the glycosyl has a three buildering molecules on it. There are also mono uh, buildering, which only have one buildering, uh, build rate on the glycosyl. The first trial, we study the effect of the tri on boiler's production, we used the two different strains. One's RAS 308, one's RAS 708. And the trial run, uh, was run for five weeks. And we take sample, first one uh, on day 21, and also at the end of the trial, we look into different aspect, the parameters of growth performance. And we found, in general, the all the birds perform well. There's no significance in feeding intake. And also, no significant difference in overall average daily gain. And all, but there's one significant difference we observe. It's not reduction of abdominal fat, so which lead us to think about how could this happen and why? And also, what's the value to the producers? So these are those data for the animal trials. So you can see these are control. These two open box are control groups without the addition of any building. So the response, this is a fat versus the body weight. So even between the two different strains, you can see the difference. So ROS38 had, had more abdominal fat, and uh, ROS708 had less. So when you're on a week five, so in addition to the controls difference, the treatment groups with the buildering also shows difference. So you can see the ROS38, those two groups treat with the buildering had a significantly lower abdominal fat compared to the control group, and the same as ROS 708. We also look into the fat deposition in the breast muscle. We also found uh, the story is opposite. Uh, for ROS 708 in the breast muscle in general, the control group has higher uh, fat deposition than the ROS 308, and the same as the group uh, treatment groups. No. ROS 708 has higher fat deposition in, in breast muscle. So there's a strength different in the host response to the dietary build rate. And we also check the effect of monon build rate on the chicken 
uh, performance. We found, we observed a similar phenomena, but however, in the tri-building treated chickens, we didn't see an effect on the breast muscle. But on those chickens treated with the mono uh, building, we see this enhancement, slightly enhancement of the uh, breast muscle weight. Um, there's also those response, as you can tell from this slide. We have like a zero, Five hundred, one thousand, two thousand, three thousand ppm uh, supplement of building, and you can see in the muscle, muscle, uh, breast muscle weight. There's some correlations, even those not less significant. When I talk to Steve, listen, I, I ask her, hey, how much, how much this, how much does this mean to producers, and what he told me. Even not significant difference, in your case, in our case, it's significant. But even not significant case, like you can produce 50 gram more breast muscle in the production. That would mean a lot profit to the producers. And, uh, and his suggestion, his point was very well taken by us. So we think this would be good benefits to the producers. And also we look at the gut morphology. In a small intestine, we look at the V-line. The left hand uh, is the control birth without any treatment of the buildering. Uh, on the right side, it's treated with the buildering. You can see the morphology of the V-line treated with the uh, buildering is better. The integrity is better. And then we follow up with the mechanism studies. Because we see we seen a significant reduction of the abdominal fat deposition. And we want to see what's happening. This is a similar animal child, uh, but with small number of the birds. But at uh, uh, week three, then we sacrificed the birds. And also on day 14, we took the, we sampled them uh, gut digester to do microbiota uh, analysis. And also, uh, those birds taken from day 21, we, we check the host immune response, uh, host response by RNA seq. So, what we see from those uh, three tissues we examined one's the serum, one's the jojunil, one's abdominal. Uh, adipose. We found carbo um, carboxylase uh, fatty acid synthesis, uh, synthesis decreased. And also we found the fatty acid synthetase reduced. And also lipoprotein lipase, which is in charge for the free fatty acid and transportation, the level decreased. The, to the total cholesterol in the serum decreased. And then we, we did uh, on a sec, uh, this basically see how many reads we got. It's more than 10 million reads we got. So basically we show this data are reliable because we have enough reads. And then through the RPA analysis and the Dave's bioinformatics resources analysis, and we found the multiple genes with multiple functions in jojunil and the liver were affected by building. The top affected the function, the pathways, one is the lipid metabolism, the second one is the small molecule biochemistry, the third one is molecule transport, the third one, and the last one is cell-to-cell -cell signaling and the interaction. And we also did the KG analysis, uh, pathway analysis. And we, we identified that the PBAR signaling is on the top in the jojunil. So it's also in the liver on the second position as well. Because the PBAR it's important pathway for lipid uh, metabolism. 
So we we did uh, more analysis. We are, you know from the pathways. So which is shown in this slide, uh, we have two. Uh, you know for this one the solid square and also dot outside. This means down regulation of gene expression. And for this one, in inner line is not dot line, outside is a solid line. That that means the genes are regulated. And when you look those those genes, you can see except except, except that this one, which is upper regulated, is for oxidation of fatty acid. All others, they all down regulated. So basically, this this tells us the conclusion is the butyrin can down regulate the fatty acid synthesis and also reduce the storage and also reduce the transportation and the secretion. In in contrast to this, is increase the oxidation of fatty acid. So all this put together, that suggests why the abdominal fat deposition was decreased by the dietary building. And we look, okay, this is a story about the host response. We also look into the microbiome to see what, uh, what happened. And basically we took uh, two approaches. One to 16S RNA gene sequence. The other way we do the metabolite analysis with NMR. So for, beta, for our diversity, we didn't see any difference between the control group and the butyrin treated group. So the BD is a basal diet. The BG is the butyrin uh, glycosylate treated groups. So basically for those uh, you know, index, Cho index, you know, uh, Shangnam, uh, index, we didn't see any difference. However, when we do beta diversity analysis, we can see um, the treatment effect because they basically, they're well separated. So that means uh, the dietary effect did have effect on the micro, uh, my, uh, microbial population distribution. Uh, this basically shows uh, the distribution at uh, family and, and the genus uh, level. And the left two is uh, in, a, some, in a idiom, the right two box uh, microbiota from sitcom. So I don't want, there no need to go to the details. The basic just show roughly their distribu distribu uh, distribu distributions. Okay, the summary from the, uh, the 16S uh, RNA genes uh, sequence analysis, we got uh, such conclusions here. Now for, for this class, basically it's the pathogens. We found the density of this group uh, was reduced. And also genus U bacteria, and uh, these two groups, uh, Particularly, these groups is related to the building uh, production. And for this group, is basically associated with an unhealthy sicker. And the one significant observation we got excited is the increase in the species diversity of the bifidobacter, and also density as well. So we follow up with a qPCR analysis. We measured um, one of the key enzymes for butyrin production, and we didn't see any difference between those two groups. But for those cross-fitting uh, cross groups, clusters, one of them also, it's a major uh, produ uh, butyrate producing uh, bacteria. We also didn't see any difference. But for pivotal bacteria, again, we've seen a 
increase of the density. And also from the 16S RNA sequence data, we found the species diversity was also increased. So basically the conclusion we can make for sickle microbiota, the building has no effect on the bacterial diversity, but it can audit the microbiota composition. But these changes are good for gut health. We also follow up with the serum metabolite analysis. This table shows 10 of the uh, metabolites which showed a difference, showed an enhancement. The rest were not. Among these uh, metabolites, we also did the PCA analysis, a principal component analysis. And we found those two groups metabolites can also group together, can separate well. So that means the treatment effect. So the summary for this microbiome uh, analysis, basically we can say the dietary treatment of the buildering can increase the bacterial population and also species diversity. And um, we also see the increase of the serum charline metabolite. And according to the, uh, one review paper published in Science 2012, bifidobacteria and um, uh, faculty bacteria can moderate lipid metabolism and glucose uh, hemostasis. So therefore, we thought there's a link between the microbiota and the production of the build rate, which can enhance the chicken performance, as we see in the deposition, in the uh, reduction of the abdominal fat deposition. So that's conclusion we can make. So the take home message would be the dietary build rate can promote the growth performance. Uh, I think uh, right now we can only see in young animals. And second benefit would be reduction of the abdominal fat deposition. Third one would be increase of the breast muscle weight. Of course, this can be through the action of, a, of a gene regulation of a lipid metabolism. In addition, it can improve gut health by in by increasing the gut, enhance the gut development, and also moderate microbiota for good gut health. Okay, this, uh, this our research is mainly found by our department uh, and also Canadian poultry industry. And I believe my postdoc fellow, Alex Yin, uh, he's one of the major contributor to the host response to the building, and he worked for your company before in Shanghai. It's small world. Right. Okay, and also uh, my collaborator Steve Listen is um, is one of the top nutritionists, uh, poultry nutrition, and uh, he helped us a lot. Okay, that's all my talk today. Thank you.